Well, this is the third time, third time's a charm. You can see that I've moved out of my studio and into my daughter, Lauren Getman's house. So this is Cindy from Asner Cindy, third time's a charm. And if this one doesn't work, there just won't be a post today because sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta not go there. So I'm a nurse. Hi, Kim. How are you? I've tried three times to get this video going. Maybe it's been because it's been so long since I've done one and I have forgotten how. Maybe my camera has gotten lazy. But happy December 29th. It is Saturday. I am in my daughter's house. She and her husband are on their way back from a lovely holiday. And I am here to shampoo carpets because that's what mothers do. And her kids aren't here. So we figured this would be about the only time to... To do that so hi D hi Kim hi Betsy so anybody else I, I've let me see if I can scroll down I dropped my camera yesterday camera my phone and it shattered and so I had to put this stuff a uh, call a clear drape like a tegaderm those of you that are wound care nurses or nurses will know what that is over this shattered screen so I don't splinter my fingers uh, you'll know, get splinters in my fingers when I'm doing this so I can't get a new phone till Wednesday when our gal at our corporate office is back so I'm like ah so hi Lindy hi Jessica thanks for coming back on so oh, hi Hannah hi Hannah Hannah I have a piece of drape on my phone to keep this Hannah and I work together and she'll understand what I'm I, I dropped my phone. I dropped my phone a lot, but I keep it in this really heavy case. And yesterday when I picked it up as I was leaving work, and yes, I've worked this week other than Christmas Day, um, it was shattered. So I've got all this drape all over it. So it's like sticky clear saran wrap for those of you that aren't nurses. So hi, Jane. Hi, everybody. So feel free to share this because here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to get down to business because I've got to go shampoo carpets. And we're going to talk about what are the three S's that's allowed me for two and a half years to keep 75 pounds off? Now, I clearly have more weight to lose, about 20, 25 pounds, and I'll be very happy. But this is the first time I started this way of eating, ketogenic, low carb, whatever you want to call it, um, way of eating in May of 2016. So two and a half years, 17, 18. Yeah, I guess two and a half years. And I have never in my life ever been successful. If you have ever struggled or you know someone who's thinking about a ketogenic or cutting out the carbs, the processed carbs way of eating, and they've struggled like I have and have been obese their entire life, their entire memory, please share this to your page. Please share this to your group because I'm going to talk about what for my family has allowed us to really be able to lose the weight and maintain it. And I think last time my sister Debbie Stokes and I counted, it was about uh, it was over 900 pounds. Yes, 900 pounds that my family has lost. So these have worked for us. Will they work for you? I don't know because we're all different. But let's talk about what those three S's are because for us as a family, and truly we talk about this a lot, if, if this way of eating, because it's not a diet, it's not like you can do this for a short period of time and then go back to half a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts. It needs to become a way of life. You need to understand in your brain, these four inches are the most important part in your body for your success about ketogenic or low carb eating. Number one, it has to be simple enough that it becomes part of your life. If it is too complex, if it is too hard, if every single thing has to be weighed and measured and macroed, at least for me, it was not gonna happen. I am not that type A. Some of you are. God bless you. Would you send some to me? Would you package it up? Um, no, really, I know you can't. I'm just not the most organized person. Creative, pretty much. Uh, yeah, you got, you know what, Tegener, yeah. So it's all over my phone. It's all over my phone. That's the only way I can work it. It looks like I have like, well, I have cracks. It doesn't look like I have cracks. I have cracks everywhere. But anyway, it needs to be simple enough that you can incorporate it into your busy life. Those of you that have followed me um, know that I travel extensively for my job. This is not my job. This is my passion to help others find the relief from carb addiction that I found. I was truly a carbaholic. So for us, the first S is it had to be simple enough that it could become part of our life. Second, it had to be satisfying. Other diets that I've been on, you felt like, and my brother Steve says this, it felt like you were eating cardboard and carrots. Hi, Winnell, thanks for coming back. So it felt like you were eating cardboard and carrots. <clears throat> it was very restrictive. It was very confined. The food was not particularly tasty because fat gives food flavor, fat and salt. And we've been so afraid of fat and salt that we haven't eaten it, but we have. 
because I didn't really eat the standard American diet, or as Dr. Ken Berry calls it, the stupid American diet. I really ate things in bright colored cellophane. I ate junk food more than anything. I think even if I had, I still agree that grains aren't good for us. It, they cause a lot of inflammation, but I was satisfying myself with things that triggered a lot more eating, a lot of um, carboholic behavior, hiding food, sneaking food, eating all the time, constantly thinking about food. So it needs to be simple enough for you. Your simple may be different than mine. It needs to be satisfying. The foods I eat now are rich and luscious and amazing. It needs to be sustainable. That's the third S. It needs to be something where you feel this is simple and satisfying so I can sustain it. There are many times I would start a diet and you name it, I think I've been on it. God bless Weight Watchers. I think there should be a brass plaque above a door of anyone that you want in the three or four states where I've, I've been a Weight Watchers member and it's not a bad program and they are changing a lot of their concepts. I couldn't do it because I was so busy about, personally speaking just for me, I was so busy trying to save my points and protein and fat had so many points that I was eating carbs. So because all I was really eating were so many carbs, I was missing out on a lot of the nutrients that I needed. So this for me has been simple enough it's been satisfying enough that I've been able to sustain it for two and a half years. I don't think I was really ever to, uh, able to do that sometimes for two and a half days, sometimes <laughs> for two and a half weeks, and maybe even I could do certain diets for two and a half months. But I always lost just a little bit of weight when it would stall, which it inevitably will. Stalls happen. Just like that saying, SHI, you know what? Put a consonant in there happens stalls happen our body is not a ski slope in our weight loss our body is a series of steps so we'll drop some weight we'll plateau for a while we'll drop some weight we'll plateau for a while i didn't understand that at the time i didn't understand my body was readjusting so i would hit a stall and i would by then i'd be so fed up with so many restrictions that i would just give up and i'd go back to my standard american way of eating which for me was a lot of crap it was a lot of crap one day i added up how many carbs I was eating. I'd have to find that paper. I think on average, I was doing about four to 500 grams of carbohydrates per day. And so to drop down to 20 or under was a big step for me, but it changed my life. Because once you reduce that insulin response where your blood sugar goes up and your blood sugar drops, which is happening when we eat carbs because we force our body to release insulin, once I stopped not, I didn't even know what was happening. I knew just about an hour and a half or two hours after I ate, I felt compelled to eat again. Once I took away that hormonal release of insulin by controlling my carbs, because when I eat carbs, I must, my body must respond by squirting out insulin out. It doesn't really squirt it out, but it releases it from the pancreas. And once I controlled the carbohydrate intake, my body controlled the insulin release. And by releasing less insulin, I had less drop, less spike and drop of my blood sugar. And what that allowed me to do was to the, for the first time in my life, not constantly be thinking about food, not constantly be driven to eat again. And that for me was a miracle. I mean, it really is. And I am not going to cry about this again because I've been doing it two and a half years. You think you think I'd be over it. <laughs> you think I'd, this would be commonplace, but when I think back of how much bondage I was in, I want you guys to feel the same freedom that I felt. And it, it really relates down to controlling your carbohydrate intake. There's a lot of thought processes out there about how much protein and how much fat and everybody and their brother has an opinion. It's the most common Google term. But here's what's the most important thing so far as to get into ketosis, because you've got to control the carbohydrate intake to get into ketosis. Whether protein's going to stimulate a glucose creation response or not, trust me on this. You've got to control the amount of carbohydrates you take in. Broccoli's great, asparagus is great, a green leafy salad is great, some berries once you're under control is great, because those will not kick you out of ketosis. But if you start eating too many keto treats, if you have bread, if you have a bowl of rice, you'll kick yourself out of ketosis. Your body will go back into blue, uh, burning glucose and you're gonna have those ups and downs of just constantly chasing the food. So my, what are the three S's? Let's do it again. And please feel free to share this. 
It needs to be simple. Don't fret too much. The only thing I track anymore these days, right or wrong, are my carbohydrates. And I've got like an internal counter and I know what I have and I have not eaten. So far today I've had three Duke sausages. Now granted it's only whatever time it is here, but I've only had three Duke sausages. Why? I didn't even really need them to be honest to confess because you're supposed to only eat when you're hungry, but I thought, oh, I'm going to go over and shampoo carpets. I don't know what they have in the house because they're on vacation and I'm trying to bless them with shampoo and some carpets for them. So I'll eat a couple of Duke sausages so I have some protein. Um, I'll eat again when I'm hungry. But I have this little counter. I think I ate a, a two grams of Duke sausages, two grams of uh, uh, carbohydrates in that. But if you control that, the rest of it will take care of itself because by controlling your carbs, big secret, big secret, you control your hunger. You're not constantly feeling your blood sugar drop. I didn't know what it was I was feeling, but I was feeling when I was eating so many carbohydrates, an hour, hour and a half, I was feeling, poof, I was feeling that rush down of my, of my blood sugar rushing down because my insulin was doing what it was supposed to do. And sometimes I would hyper respond to it. And then I would get shaky and I would get hangry and I would get cranky. They have this funny, I'm going to hold on. I'm just going to, I want to show you this funny thing. So let me go get it. Uh, you guys stay with me. My daughter has this very hilarious she has this very, very hilarious sign. Oh, you're not going to be able to see it. It says, I'm, it, look, it has a bite taken out of it. It says, I'm sorry about what I said when I was hungry. <laughs> I stayed hungry so, I was just sort of a crank. My husband, I don't know if he's more happy that I have been able to lose the weight and feel good about myself for the first time since he's known me, or if he's happy I'm not so cranky. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys, keep it simple. Find foods that satisfy you. What somebody else likes may not be right for you. You may be able to do dairy and your brother may not. You may be able to do uh, more carbs and your sister or your friend, your best friend may not. You may be 62 like I, well, I'm not quite 62, a couple more months. You may be 60, don't say that word yet. You may be 61 like I am or you may be 35. You may be on blood pressure medications or steroids or anti-inflammatories, and you may not be. Every single point of that can make a difference, but if you, for you, keep it simple, find foods that satisfy you. If you love meatloaf, if meatloaf is a comfort food for you with mashed potatoes, you can, you can alter your recipe quite easily, and you could have that in mashed cauliflower, or you could have meatloaf with a great big salad or steamed broccoli with butter on it amazing stuff. Find those foods that when you eat them, you say, oh, we were, we, were, we were eating leftovers last night for dinner. My husband had gone up to the grocery store, which here in Texas is H-E-B. And I looked in the um, refrigerator and I was pulling out different things and I saw this casserole. I make this amazing casserole. I really do need to post it for you. And it's a cauliflower, broccoli, you use rice cauliflower, you make this cream of broccoli with cream cheese and heavy whipping cream and butter and you pour it over the rice cauliflower and, and you put all sorts of shredded cheddar cheese on it and you bake it. And I made it for uh, Christmas dinner over at his daughter's house, which we had the best time. Oh, it was so good. I got to see seven of the grandbabies. I don't get to see that often because they live a little bit over an hour away, but I digress. So I look in the fridge and I'm pulling things out and there was this square of the casserole left, you know, it's like, because we'd put it in a different container and I went, because oh, I love this casserole. I love this casserole. And I called him, I said, hey babe, there's, there's some of that cauliflower broccoli casserole. This all goes in, there's a theme here because it needs to be satisfying to you. I said, are you really intrigued with having that tonight? He goes, do you want it? And I'm like, well, yeah, sort of, kind of. He goes, well, honey, you take as much as you want. When someone tells you that and you're married to them, you take it at face value. So I heated that up and I, I sat and ate it. I ate all of it. It was so good. I felt so satisfied. It was so wonderful and rich and fatty. I didn't have any protein with it. I just ate, well, there was some protein in the eggs and the, and the cheddar cheese in the casserole. And I had everything else heating up when he walked in and he goes, is there any casserole left? I went, <laughs> I went, well, you said I could eat as much as you want, and I really wanted all of it. He goes, you didn't leave me any. I'm like, no. So my penance is that I have to make another whole batch tonight, which I will. So anyway, keep it simple. Keep it satisfying. There are recipes that will pretty much replace every single thing 
that you miss almost every single thing cheesecake brownies different types of breads i make this amazing cheddar garlic biscuit sort of like what red rob red robin uh was it red lobster has um great salads now we don't have those treats every day but you can you can find those things that when you want a treat they will satisfy you and when you do simple enough for what you like to do and you find foods that are in your, in your comfort zone whether it's meatloaf whether it's meatballs whether it's you name it whatever it is you can do some sort of lasagna i just saw this recipe i have to try it and the noodles instead of making your sort of keto noodles they layer thin sliced deli turkey and i thought i have got to try this so you can find things pizza i make some really good pizza there's tons of recipes out there i'm not a recipe person i'm never going to be the keto uh connect people which i love my makeup by the way um i listen to them all the time but find those things there's so many resources out there keep control of your carbs keep them to 20 or under net or total your call i've got a video on what's the difference between total carbs and net carbs so many people are going to reboot come january 1 they're going to restart and if you make it too hard well i can't i can't say for you when i make it too hard i get overwhelmed and i stop things so keep it simple keep it satisfying and you will be able to sustain it. So those are three S's. Those are the secrets. And I'm going to take just a minute and, and, ooh, these are bad. My, hi, Heather. How are you? I love you, Heather. I haven't talked to you in forever and I need to. So Heather is out of uh, Kansas City. So if you need a good chiropractor, um, the Cardin Center for Wellness is there. Uh, she is just amazing. Hi, Sandra. A cornbread recipe. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. Yeah, Deanna, I thought that was such a good idea. Deli meat instead of noodles. Yeah, so yeah, she just created the recipe in my head. Hi, yes, hi. Di oh, I just switched it around. What did I do? You get to look at the ceiling. Isn't that awesome? Oh, there I am. Um, oh yeah, low carb cheddar biscuits. Good, Lisa. I'm glad. Um, I have made, uh, Deanna's made some casseroles that, that, oh good, you eat them all. Yeah, no regrets. And that's the difference. Not only are there no regrets when you eat one of these great, where you've either lowered your carbohydrate of a favorite casserole, or you, um, have found one online that you like and look at those reviews and see what people say, you know, before you just make it. Um, it really does become sustainable. It really does because you are not feeling like you're living on cornbread and carrot. Uh, cornbread. Hi, <laughs> somebody said cornbread. Uh, cardboard and carrots. So that's yeah, great. So hi, Tammy. Oh, recipes. Oh, Tammy. Here's the places I would go. I, I will post the ones I was talking to you about, about the casserole and my meatloaf, but um, maybe not today because I'm shampooing carpets here in just a minute. But low carb yum, all day I dream about food, um, sugar free mama, the keto connect people, dietdoctor.com. Christy Honeycutt Sullivan. Those are all fantastic places. Maria Emmerich. Oh my gosh. She's got the most amazing cookbooks. I just posted a link, which didn't really turn out too well the other day about her. She's got a really nice beginner keto book that talks about the science. So you understand why you don't want to deviate, why you want to do this. And it also has recipes. Jimmy Moore and, um, his wife just came out with a great, um, uh, keto for keto real food keto I think is the name of it so there's so many recipes out there so those are the websites I typically go to um, so uh, Natalie you're almost 49 menopause since the late 30s so if you guys need to go I'm done with the three S's but I'm going to answer some of these things here because I I'm really putting off starting my shampooing but it's a good workout hey add activity to your life we're going to start doing some videos on how to do add some basic uh, why am I looking at you through these my Dollar Tree glasses, because um, I can see this way, but I have to put them on to read. Um, what was I gonna say? Totally forgot. Oh, about adding activity, housework, yard work. Go out and pull some weeds and bend over and stretch the back of your of your thighs. So Natalie's 49. Um, so hard to lose. Tired, always frustrated. Been working on keto. I can't read the rest, Natalie, because it, it does weird things when I try to read the rest. Natalie, it is it is frustrating as we age, and. It's hard, but you may need to see someone about your hormones. You may need to see if you are premenopausal, that maybe your thyroid level is low. If you go, and this is one of, I think is a great recommendation Dr. Barry makes, is that if you go, and he's a great one to watch, if you guys don't follow him, he's a straight shooter, a family practice doc out of uh, Tennessee. And uh, what he says is go to a compounding pharmacy or call them and say, 
who orders compounded natural thyroid medication for people and he'll they'll say oh dr. so-and-so dr. so-and-so and those would be the doctors that you could go to and while they may or may not really know keto they may have a high likelihood they're more attuned to how to um, get your thyroid in order so if you're tired all the time it could be that you're low on sodium and magnesium it could be that your thyroid is a little low so uh, Sandy I will post the recipes hi Kathy let me see who else um, I'm hoping you have oak oh, so Nanette is going to eliminate heavy whipping cream from her coffee and sweetener um, we'll get you going so apparently you've stalled I, I once again if it's too long of a message I can't hit the see more without it uh, causing problems yeah I will guys anybody that said post the recipe so Pauline says her friend loses weight faster than her but she's 20 years younger hello yes the young have a lot more energy and part of that is that for the most part they don't have the diseases of inflammation that come on over time from all of the uh, sticking of sugar to our body that inflammation is the root of all of, most of inflammation is the root of most of our chronic diseases as we age and they have more muscle mass and what do I mean by that our muscles once we go past 45 we start to lose a little bit of muscle each year unless we're intentionally adding to it unless we're intentionally doing resistance training which of course here I am 61 and just barely starting it so once you hit 60 it really starts to decrease so without the muscle mass which is our furnace that's where our mitochondria are creating and using this energy without that muscle mass that we have lost as we've aged then our metabolism what's called your resting metabolic rate has slowed down your basal metabolic rate so it has slowed down so we just will not burn the calories that somebody who's younger who has more muscle mass now how are some what are some of the things that we can do so I'm going to show you one of the most simple things I'm sitting in a chair all right so one of the most simple things you can do is you can stand up and you can sit down you can stand up and you can sit down what have I done I've activated those major muscles in my thighs and if when I stand up I literally consciously squeeze my glutes together squeeze my butt together so you do this and you sort of at the end you uh, you sort of do a <laughs> too, too much information right you, you squeeze your glutes together what you're gonna do especially if you do that consciously uh, when you go to the bathroom I call those my papa squats and dr. Barry and I are gonna do a video on that we, we filmed it over at Lindy's house Lindy thank you for letting us use your studio um, your house is our studio there's a funny picture of me sitting on the toilet like this because he said something that was making me die laughing and there's dr. Barry standing in the bathroom with me and his wife Nisha is taping it so wait for that video it should be pretty dang funny but anyway little things like that can actually over time make a difference I try to do 10 to 30 squats every time I go to the bathroom so if I do 10 and I go to the bathroom eight times a day I've done 80 squats so in other words you just you, you finish your business in the in the bathroom and you stand up and you, you know and if you need to hold on to the sides of the wall or you need to hold on to the sink that's fine stand up and squeeze and go down stand up and squeeze and go down and you'd be surprised what that starts to do you really will be surprised you don't have to pay for gym membership you can but the whole part about that simple satisfying and sustainable we all go to the bathroom ladies and gentlemen unless you're a renal failure patient we all go to the bathroom we all stand up throughout the day to, to do whatever it is we need to do use that time to do a couple of them at first when I first started this I could only do about three or four after I rose from the from the potty and I couldn't go all the way back down without hurting so I please be safe don't overdo it keep your look up how to do a squat properly you want your your feet square in other words in alignment you can turn them out just a little bit when you go down if you feel pain in your knee don't do that try to sort of adjust the angle of how your toes are pointing and if you really feel any pain don't do that another way that you can do it and I'll see if I can do this down like this is this is my thigh and it's on the chair right now clearly that's my thigh clearly that's not my head um, so one of the things you can do is do you see this space I've given myself I've just lifted it maybe three or four inches off of the chair when you do that you're literally activating these muscles here and, and it is quite amazing what that does right now my thigh muscle because I'm not an athlete my thigh muscle is lit up and in just a few more seconds my whole leg is going to start shaking so you can be sitting in the chair and alternating these knees and holding them up like that and that is going to help you with your muscles now is it the same as hiring a personal trainer and going to the gym and just uh, 
and getting to the point that you can't move. No, it's not the same, but it's something. Keep it simple. Just because you can't do everything doesn't mean you can't make some changes. So that's it for me. I'm, I'm not going to belabor this. I thought it was going to be short. And I, of course I get, I haven't talked to you guys in a long time. <laughs> I've missed you. It's just been pretty busy here with between work and Christmas and all that stuff. But that's it for me. If I haven't answered your question, I will try to get back to it. If you did leave one, please know how sincerely I appreciate your support. Please hit the share button. It's really, I think there's so many people out there that have great videos, but I'm one of the, I don't want to say one of the few, but many of the people haven't struggled. They don't understand. And it's not to their detriment. I, I applaud them for reaching out with their message. But please, if anybody is in our age group and they've struggled their whole life, I want to be that beacon of hope that you can do it, that it doesn't have to be any harder than what you're willing to do, that if you control your carbohydrate intake and don't like eat eight pounds of meat a day, you're going to be successful in this if you practice patience and perseverance. So keep it simple. Find foods that are satisfying. And you like my little red tips. And, um, and it will be sustainable. So you... Somebody just called me right when I finished. Ah!